Should you sing along with your guitar playing? Well, if you are improvising melodies, then your musical phrasing is one of the most important aspects of what you are playing. Your musical phrasing is the thing that will make what you are playing sound catchy or memorable or structured or iconic or interesting or compositional. So in this phrasing guitar lesson, I'm going to show you how being able to sing along with your guitar playing can be a secret weapon for improving your musical phrasing and therefore enhancing your overall artistry and craft as an improvising guitarist. We'll cover three main things. I'm going to share with you the four critical elements that make phrasing sound amazing and how singing along with our playing addresses all four of those things. Then I will walk you through four very clear steps for how you can start working on singing along with your playing yourself so you can enhance your musical phrasing. And lastly, I will demonstrate how breaking up our note selection into melodic patterns combined with phrasing can be the ultimate combo and the ultimate path to helping our playing sound unique and musical and expressive. So phrasing can mean a few things in music and in our case as improvising guitarists, I'm just talking about the basically the rhythmic structure of the notes, the spacing of the notes and the way I like to think of it, just my in ultimate aim with good phrasing as I'm improvising is just that I am reacting to what I played before. I'm reacting to what I played before and I am concluding ideas. So I'm actually making sense from one idea to another, to another, to another, to some kind of conclusion. So that's one kind of broad way to think of phrasing. So we're just making sense with our ideas. There are three big ways to work on enhancing your musical phrasing as an improviser. One of them is to work on phrasing models, actually choosing a rhythm, repeating that rhythm, altering it slightly and creating compositional structure with your rhythms like an A, phrase, a B phrase, an A phrase, a C phrase that's contrasting or concluding that kind of thing. I have a video on that. Definitely check that out if you want to work on everything phrasing. The second way to work on phrasing is by playing rhythms that we base off of sentences or phrases or words that we might speak. Similarly, you might take a rhythm from a melody, you know, or a song and play that rhythm and repeat it, but in a totally different scale or tonality or note choice from the original song. It won't sound like the original at all, but you're working on phrasing in a great way. The third way is to sing along with our playing, and that's what we're talking about in this video, and it works for a number of reasons. And there are four, what I think of as four big areas that make phrasing sound good. The first one is that it has to have strong rhythm or concrete rhythm, just not ambiguous timing and rhythm. The second thing is that there is repetition, and that can be just purely rhythmic repetition or also pitch and note repetition. The third thing is that re ideas are reacting to or building on what was played before. And the fourth thing is that ideas get concluded. There are conclusions to ideas. I find that working on singing along with our playing kind of naturally enhances all four of those things. I think it makes us more intimately connected to what we're playing. So we, we naturally want it just instinctively want it to be catchier. And when it's catchier, it tends to repeat more. Pitches tend to repeat more. Rhythms tend to repeat more. It tends to be a little more locked in in time. It tends to be simpler. We tend to pause more because we actually have to breathe. And when we pause, we digest what happened before, which makes us want to react to and follow what happened before. So things actually are making sense. And similarly, because we're so connected to it, there's this desire to kind of finish off an idea or conclude something if we can on the spot. There's a reason why artists like Keith Jarrett or Kurt Rosenwinkel or Glenn Gould are known for singing along with their playing. There's a result that they get from it. They wouldn't do it if there wasn't somewhere along the way that doing that enhanced their experience of the music or their interpretation or their expression of the music. So our goal is just to be able to do this. We don't need to be doing it all the time. We can do it more or less depending on how we like it, but just the ability to work on it and get the inspiration and kind of the magic from it and then keep that even without singing, that's one of our goals. So now I'm going to show you four clear steps you can use to work on this ability. Step number one is a little unconventional because it's the opposite of phrasing, but it is amazing to work on this, which is playing constant notes. So let's just play in the key of C because I have a, I have a little loop that I'm going to play here. And the loop is just a C major seven chord. 
to an F major seven chord. So we're just nice one chord to four chord loop. Love that progression. Could play with that all day. It's just an easy one to improvise around with. So play constant notes and you can be doing this anywhere. It can be in a key, can be not in a key. And you just play constant notes, whatever tempo, whatever type of rhythm. So notice I change rhythmic durations. It can be it can be faster, it can be slower, it can be triplets, it can be eighth notes, it can be quarter notes. But just can we keep playing without breaks on purpose, without the breaths? And I also like to challenge myself to can I do that and actually like the sound of it as you know for what it is, just this kind of wall of sound continuous playing um, to get the sound that I like from it. That relies on having a nice kind of touch and feel and technique and accenting in certain places um, and the beat and stuff like that. But just being able to play constant notes. If you don't need to even do a backing trap, but can you? a secret weapon to good phrasing because it's the opposite of phrasing so then when we do pause when we're thinking of being musical and expressive and phrasing we don't want to be thinking of where are our notes what is the scale what fret do i play you don't want to think that at all so you have to prove to yourself that you have that down by just being able to just go your finger can just choose anything anytime doesn't matter i can talk to you while playing this and just going and just playing anywhere and then once we can just play constant notes then we can work on uh, step two so step two is just to work separately on out of time not with the backing track you know super slow just vocalizing with your playing singing along with your playing but very important here that the singing part does not have to be it doesn't have to be technically good it doesn't have to even match pitches at all so of course naturally we're going to think we've got to match pitches um, but a lot of the pitches, even when you're trying to sing along, aren't going to land perfectly with the guitar. And feel free to if you're really not comfortable singing. And believe me, I've been there. I used to be way less comfortable singing, and it's still challenging for me. But um, you can just vocalize with it and not even play, not even try to match the pitches. Na 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 na. na, na. So sometimes it just it'll kind of be the contour and start matching a little pitches naturally but be as relaxed as possible with it don't think i am trying to sing the pitches and like have it be too perfect too perfect is going to be too tense and and all that really needs to be loose so if my singing voice runs out of range with the guitar if i'm going that then it goes way high i'm just going to kind of vocalize with it and not even on purpose just let it kind of maybe find the pitches again in a different octave and not sweat about it too much i'm really thinking more about just vocalizing with it and and being in a groove and using the space and the phrasing so you see what i mean so sometimes it's a little on sometimes it's a little off and i'm really just being connected with it as much as i can so step three is really doing it for real it's trying to do it in time maybe with a backing track or just on your own but try to do those four things try to play rhythms that are not ambiguous try to repeat ideas repeat pitches repeat rhythms try to react to what you played before and try to conclude ideas so we'll do this with this with the backing track <laughs> This is how I feel a lot when I'm singing along where things get way simpler. If I played that on the guitar, if I started playing on the guitar without the singing. I'd be inclined to try to do all of that kind of stuff, but when I'm singing along, it just I kind of like take a chill pill a little.
it makes me want to just keep going because it feels now it feels lyrical it feels musically lyrical from that so i'm intention i'm intentionally kind of just relaxing into it and for me anyway and I, it it slows me down like that and that's the beautiful part and i just feel so much more connected to it so much more relaxed it feels so much more melodic and groovy and um it just feels more expressive to me so step four the final step here is to try to embody that without the singing just so we don't totally rely on it whenever kind of control over our playing and say okay i get how that feels now can i be as in touch with it as i was when i was singing but just with my mind singing along and really feeling thinking in phrasing thinking in all of those ways that we want to repeat ideas connect ideas conclude ideas react to what we played before make sure the rhythm is is nice and solid but do that without the singing involved you can kind of go back and forth but let's let's see if i can tap into the same thing now That's much more singable because I was kind of trying to imagine that I was singing along with it without having to actually do it. So you hear a little bit of the concluding idea there at the end, because I'm just trying to tap into all those things. It's actually quite hard. You know, I want to go into guitar playing where I lose track of the singing along in my mind and tracking it in a phrasing way. But then I might catch myself doing that, do a little more singing with it, and then try it again and repeat, rinse and repeat in the practicing. So phrasing is this huge, huge, huge thing that helps us sound melodic and catchy and unique and, you know, how we want to sound. And that is all about the rhythm and the space and how we're reacting to ourselves. Another big thing that combined with that that I find the most game changing is melodic patterns, melodic sequences, breaking up notes in logical specific orders and repeating the a pattern of notes through a scale, through a key, that kind of thing. So um, there's some really basic ones with the pentatonic scale that I recommend and I have a free download that you can get. It's just the top three pentatonic scale patterns, the melodic patterns. Um, and I use these all the time in my playing. So a fun challenge is can you sing along with those? One of them is this. And of course that sounds like an exercise when we do it, but when you play try to incorporate it in. Another one is little patterns that you can play little bits of as you as you play. I use them all the time, little chunks of them as I'm playing melodies and then pausing and having phrasing. So you can download that for free. There's a link in the top of the description for the top three pentatonic scale melodic patterns just a little handy PDF to have in front of you while you practice. In conclusion, should you sing along with your playing? I would say yes. You don't have to all the time. It's not how we should just be playing all the time, but having that ability opens up a lot of doors and enhances our musicianship and our musicality a great deal. If you want to really master your phrasing and really work on this, then check out my other two phrasing videos because they cover the other ways of working on it, the structural phrasing models, as well as the borrowing rhythms and uh, working with speaking rhythms. These, and then singing along with these three ways of working on phrasing, you will be a master at phrasing. So there's a link in the description at the top of the links mentioned section to go to my playlist that has those other two videos. Uh, in it, which is my phrasing playlist, or you can click on this link on the screen here if you're watching on YouTube. I post a new lesson video every single week. I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.